Hey, welcome back to the Krabby Dice. Today we're looking at Shakespeare, one of the prettiest games from the past few years. So, what is the theme to this game? Well, we're in charge of a theater and we're going to be building sets and building costumes and hiring actors and doing all that stuff to make the best plays and score the most points. Because, like every Euro, we're scoring points. Alright, so this is going to be just a setup and rules video. If you want to see the playthrough and my thoughts on the video, click on the link below. Three things before we start, as usual, please comment, subscribe, and like my videos, that would be amazing. Now let's get started. Alright, the base game setup. So here we have the main board, just put it in the middle of the table, that's fine. Put your money out and your plus three crafts and markers next to the game board, easy reach of all players. Now we're going to take our deck of objective cards, give it a shuffle, and place it next to the game board. And then we're also going to have a deck of character cards. These are going to have two types, they're going to be actors and craftsmen. So some of them are going to help us in our acts and the other one are going to help us get material uh, for our stages and our costumes. All right, now you're going to flip over the amount of cards equal to the number of players plus two. So in a three player game like I'm going to simulate here, flip over five cards. All right, we are going to have a pre-game draft of these in reverse turn order, but I'll come back to that at the end of the setup. All right, the only other thing we need to do for the game board is fill up our material. But for that, we need to look at this handy dandy sheet. So, according to the number of players, you're going to set up your bags. So you're going to have two bags. You're going to have one full of theater parts, and you're going to have another one full of costume parts. So make sure that these tokens, or these amount of tokens, are in the bag. So you're going to have to take some of them out, right? Because here in a six, four player game, there's 16 uh, ones, and in a three player game, there's only 12. So you're going to look at the numbers here. So there's nine and nine. So in a three player game, you're going to put nine tokens in there. So reach into the bag and take out nine tokens. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There you go, nine. Do the exact same thing for the theater parts. For the theater parts, I like to stack them because they all have the same exact ability and they take up quite about amount of space. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There you go, nine. So you can actually stack these on top of themselves like this. Save some space, and there you go. Uh, we do have a round tracker. Looks like a piece from Sorry. <laughs> it's gonna go on the number one. Now we'll go to our player boards. So each player is gonna take one of these boards. They're not color coded just yet. We're gonna give them each a character uh, selection card here. This is gonna tell them their color. We're gonna give them five discs, four of these resting tokens, and finally, they're going to have a whole bunch of these flat discs. All right. These ones are the flat ones. Those are the thick ones. Those are the ones for the actions. And these are the ones that are going to track your progress. So for your game board, there's only one of them to be placed. And that's on your uh, influence track over here. Just put it right there. The rest are going to be placed on the game board. So let's come back here. I'm going to put one at the beginning of each act track. So there's act one, act two, act three. You're going to put one on the point scoring track up there, on the five. And you're going to have two left. One's going to go on the turn order track there, and one's on the uh, initiative order track here. So uh, figure out who first player is in the game. So let's say I'm first player. And then you'll copy that in on the other track. There you go. Do that for all the players. Make sure all the players stack up on top of each other, except for here. Figure out who second player is. He'll go second, second. Third player will go third and third. Right, let's just put an example here. All right. Now, the last thing we need to do for setup is the pre-turn order draft for your first card. So starting with third player, so that's going to be green right there. They're going to take out any card they want. So let's say he takes this card because it's pretty powerful. There you go. And we're going to go on to blue. They're going to take any card. Doesn't really matter. Let's say he takes this guy. Done. Then. I'm going to take a card because I'm first player. Which one do I want? Let's say I take this guy. He's going to sit beside my board. Sorry for the glare. And we're almost ready to go. You just refill. <laughs> and now you're ready to go. So let's go to the rules and then we'll come back. All right. Welcome to the rules section for Shakespeare. So here we are set up for three players. Uh, so before we go into a lot of detail here, what are some of the main mechanics we're dealing with in this game? There's going to be a bidding phase where we're going to be bidding our tokens to figure out the turn order. And then after that, we're going to be doing our actions. 
So actions are drafting people, drafting theater parts, drafting costume parts, and all that stuff's gonna go on your game board, and then you're gonna have a phase where you're activating all those people to get tokens and to go up the axe to score as many points as possible. Was that complicated? Maybe. <laughs> it's not that complicated. Just follow along. The game's gonna last six rounds. It's gonna be tracked up here. Uh, during rounds four and six, there's a special phase, but we'll talk about that later. Um, so each round has the same six phases. You're gonna follow the six every time. One, three, five, six. Let's go into detail on all those six, and then we'll come back. All right, phase one is bidding for turn order. So this is the turn order. So for that, we're gonna have to go on our own player boards here. So we're each gonna have these five cylinders. These are the thicker, uh, thicker cylinders, not the flat ones. All right, these are the ones you're gonna be bidding uh, to decide turn order. All right. So you're wondering why? Why don't I just bid all five? Well, it's because it's golf rules, right? The lower you bid, the earlier in turn order you'll go, and the amount that you bid is the amount of actions you'll have for the following phase. So for example, if I bid three, I'll probably go in mid turn order because it's about halfway, but I'm only gonna have three actions or uh, activations for the next phase. So if I bid all five, I'm gonna be guaranteed to go last or before last, but I will have five actions to perform next turn. Or next phase same thing if I bid one I'm almost certainly to go first but I'm only gonna make one activation next turn all right so that's how this works so let's simulate that I bid two blue bid two and green bid four let's just say all right so what I like to do is as soon as you finish bidding and you all show your your stuff whatever you didn't bid just put it back down here and I'll show you why after now let's go back to the main board and we're gonna adjust the turn order. So like I said, I bid two, blue bid two, and green bid four. So what's gonna happen is, because red and blue bid the exact same amount, you're gonna look at the initiative track over here, and this is the tiebreaker. So I already adjusted it. Red is gonna win, because he bid two, and he breaks the tie against blue. Then blue bid two, so he'll go second, and green bid four, so he'll go third. All right, for this phase, Whoever is always first is going to score a point. So I'll just give myself a point here. And there you go. After that, whatever you bid, what I like to do is always place them above your board next to your recruitment card over here. Because it's a good way to show all players that I still have two actions and my recruitment card to do this round. Alright, so once you start using things, this will get depleted and end up down here. Okay, so this is phase one. Let's go to the next one. All right, phase two is all about doing your actions for the game. So this is where we're going to be spending most of our time. All right. So again, the way this phase works is we already established turn order in the previous phase, but in turn order, you'll be performing one action at a time and you'll just be going around and around doing your actions in this order until everyone runs out of actions. Again, like we saw in phase one, it's possible somebody runs out of actions before other players. In that case, you just skip their turn when uh, looping back around in player order Okay, the second thing you do at the start of this phase is just reset your initiative track by moving all the tokens down I'll show you when it happens. We're gonna reseed these initiative tokens in a little bit Okay, so in general, there's two types of actions in the game There's recruitment where we're gonna be using our card to get one of these characters or an extra down here and then there's actually activating the characters next to your player board here by using your tokens. So let's talk about recruitment first. That's where you're gonna end up using your card. And every single round of the game, you're gonna recruit exactly one character. This card is just a reminder to you and your other players that you've already done that action. So the way it works is you're gonna swap this card with any of the characters that you want to take. So let's say I wanna take this actress. I'm gonna put the card here and then put this card on my player board area. What I like to do is put my actors on the left and my craftsmen on the right. It helps me organize my board a little better. All right, so this is recruitment. Let me just put it back. The cost of taking anyone is free. All right, so there is no cost. You can just take whoever you want. The cost that you see in the top right will affect your game at the will affect your score at the end of the game because you have to pay everyone, and if you can't, you'll just end up losing points. 
all right so keep that in mind when taking somebody if you don't really want to pay anyone or waste money you can take an extra which is sorry not this guy but take any of the cards that is here and just flip it to its backside and then take them so these guys all cost nothing it's an option that you have all right okay so that's recruiting let's put this card back the other option is activating so you can even activate a character that you recruited this round so I'll just give you an example let's say i grab this girl then you can activate her boom activating means putting your disc on a character all right so when you activate a character you do their ability on the top left of the card so actors are simple they all work the same way you're essentially going to get usually two types of benefits either ambience which is your track down here so it's going to go up and down so this one lets it go up by two it's one two and then here you have the axe uh, tracks so by putting an action disc there i get to move my tokens on the three acts up here so if it was a red uh, feather it's this one yellow or blue feather you go up those tracks if it's a white it's wild so i can go up twice on any track i want this one or i go up twice once on two different tracks all right so that's how actors work now let's talk about craftsmen sort of works a little different when you activate a craftsman you're gonna look at the top left and it'll tell you what type of part you take from the general supply so if it's a square you're taking theater parts and if it's a circle you're taking costume parts so let's say i'm activating this guy so i take six points worth of theater parts from the general supply so we're going to come back here and i can take this five and this one or this four and this one all right so it's this. let's say i take the five and the one all right now what's going to happen as soon as you take theater parts and only theater parts is you're going to gain the benefits on the tiles that you took so five will give me one of those plus three chits and all the other ones have a different benefit just look at the tile all right no matter what type of part you take, you need to place them on your board right away. All right, so theater parts go here and costume parts go on your actors. All right, so let's talk about the theater. Easy. Just two rules. Pyramid style, you need to support the base before you move up. So I have to place the token here before I place here, obviously. And second is the theater has to mirror itself. So think of there's an imaginary line in the middle and the left hand side the right hand side has to match the left hand side so for example this will be an illegal move because it can't go there it doesn't match the two i could put it there and then put my one there so there you go there you go now we're legal because everything on the right matches what's on the left in the future i would have to put a one here and i would have to put a two right here okay if you cover up a candle you just score a point. Okay. Uh, just a couple of extra things. If you manage to place a golden token on it using specific uh, um, characters, uh, gold is wild, so you get to mirror any token you want. So you can put the gold wherever you like. It'll always match what's on the right-hand side. All right. When grabbing from the slots, whether it's costume or theater, you cannot take a golden token. You need to activate this character to get them. All right, you take either the theater part or you take the costume part. I'll talk about that shortly when going through some of the extra type of characters. All right, so those are char uh, theater pieces. Now let's talk about costume uh, pieces. So let's say I want to activate her. I get six points worth of costume pieces. Here you go, the six. So same concept, you come up here and you take six points worth of costume pieces. So let's say I take the four and the two. Remember, you can't take the golden one. So I'll take these two and I'll assign these to my actors. Now the way these works is you just place them at the bottom of your board here. Or the bottom of the cards. Now, if you ever complete a costume, which means have all three tokens on a character, or an actor you look at this chart down here and you gain the benefit right away so here uh, my total is 11 I will look at the chart and I would score two points because for 11 or 12 I get two points so see 11 5 plus 4 plus 2 
Shakespeare over here previously on a previous round at a 10 so he would have gave me a point and a dollar from the general supply he gives me nothing because he's not completed yet another benefit of completing costumes is they're gonna give you an ability here in the bottom right but this only triggers during the rehearsal phase coming up later all right we're not gonna talk about that right now so that's costumes and uh, and uh, the theater parts all right some other uh interesting abilities is you have the queen over here when you activate her you can either take four dollars from the general supply or take three objective cards pick one and put the other two underneath the deck all right some other guys we need to talk about we already talked about him a little bit if you activate him so if you add him in your player board area and you activate him he lets you take one of those golden chits up there so the golden theater is wild, so it matches everything. And at the end of the game, for all golden pieces in your tableau, so whether it's costume parts or theater parts, you'll score an extra point at the end of the game. So that's an interesting note. And lastly, there are these helpers. These guys you can't ever activate. All right, These guys just go next to your player board area. They are craftsmen, and they add a plus one to all future craftsmen actions. So if I had this guy on my player board, over here now when I do this theater gathering uh, token action here I will get seven points worth instead of six because I have one helper here all right and they stack so if you end up with three helpers then it's plus three to all your actions all right so that's pretty good all right those are all the actions now let's circle back to this initiative step here so the way this get this gets reset is the first person to activate a character goes on top of the the heap over here so let's say blue is the first one to activate a character he would go to number one the second person to activate a character would go number two and the third one and so on and so on all right so this is going to establish the initiative track order for the phase one for next turn all right that was a lot <laughs> let's go to the next phase all right phase three is all about dealing with your ambience that's the section right over here on your player board so in phase two we're moving this left and right and eventually it'll land on something let's see here all right so i didn't talk about it during the last phase or action phase but if anyone would take one of these purple ones all other players will move their ambience down by one all right so that's the power of the purple three now if at the end of the round and start of phase three any of these purple ones are gonna move everyone's ambience down by one so for example if we ended round or phase two like this everyone's going to move down their ambience by two because there's two purples left in here so we're going to come here and move our ambience down by two and whatever you land on after doing this that's the bonus you're going to get for phase three so there's a loser point the black feathers move back on any track you've moved up on so for example I can't pick blue or red because I haven't moved up on them, so I can go down on yellow if I had landed here. This is nothing. This is gain a coin. This one is, this one is move up on any track. We've already seen the white feather before. And this is just gain a point. All right. After you get your bonus, you reset back up to the middle. And that's it. So that's phase three. Let's go to the next one. All right, phase four is the dress rehearsal. This is only going to be done on rounds four and six. Very important. You don't do the dress rehearsal unless it's four and six. Okay, so for the dress rehearsal, before you even look at the axe, because that's the whole point of this phase is to score the axe, what you're going to do is go to your player board, and for every single actor that you've completed their costume, you're going to activate their power on the bottom right. All right, so let's say this one I've completed, so it's one yellow, and this one I've completed, it's one red. So then you go back to the game board, and you'll gain one red and one yellow. All right, so all the players are going to do that. Okay, and then after that, you're going to score all the acts. And they kind of score very simple. You just look at the top row over here, and you'll see what you get. So for the red, it's all about gaining money. So, for example, red's going to get $3 because they're here. Blue's gonna get one dollar. Well, let's say blue's here. You'll still get only one dollar. You'll get three if you pass here. And green's actually gonna lose a point. <laughs> so for all these tracks, if you're still in the first three, you actually lose a point. All right. They want you to move up to at least the fourth spot on all of them to not get a negative. 
all right so for the second track for example uh blue is gonna get two points because he's in first place and red is going and sorry green is actually gonna get one point minus one point so that's zero and red's gonna get a negative one point so the tiebreaker for all these track is who's at the bottom because they're the first person to get to that spot right so if in the future uh we're like this and red moves well green was already there so red goes on top which means green was there before all right so the tiebreaker is always whoever's at the bottom then we'll look at the last track which is red's gonna gain one point blue's gonna gain nothing and green's gonna lose a point so you adjust the scores up there accordingly uh with what you gained and what you lost if it's gold just take it from general supply all right that's phase four very important only during rounds four and six phase five is the refresh phase very simple you're just going to give everyone back the recruitment card now any characters that were not taken go to a discard pile i like to leave them here you're going to redraw equal to the number of players plus two so in a three player game put out five more you're going to do the same thing for the costumes and the set pieces just throw them in a discard pile you're going to redraw tokens equal to the number of players so in a three player game nine and nine and so on you're going to move over the round marker to the next one and that's it all right finally we get to phase six which is the last phase before we start the next round all right so for this phase it's called the rest phase and we're gonna have to go to our player board and this is all about adding rest tokens to the uh characters that currently did actions but before you do that always follow the same two steps first clear off any rest tokens that are currently on the board those were the guys that did actions the previous round so they'll be available to act on the next round so let's return these back all right and next you're gonna add rest tokens to all the characters you have activated this round except for one there's one of them that you I guess uh, you pump them full of Red Bull and you can do work again but <laughs> all of them except one so you can look at how many tokens you had out there so it's basically how many actions or characters you activated and you do minus one and that's how many rest tokens you're gonna put out so in this example uh, let me make you a bigger example here so let's say I activated four guys this round I'm gonna have to put three rest tokens out there so I'm gonna take three rest tokens and you basically just cover up their number on the top left to say you can't activate them so let's say I don't want to activate him her and there you go so once you do that return all your discs back to the top of the board so that you can do the bidding for the next round there you go that's the resting phase just as a reminder, you cannot activate these characters during the next action phase. All right, that's why we put these X's. There you go. All right, those are all the phases and all the rules to the game. So you're gonna keep doing that for six rounds and eventually you'll hit the sixth round. And on the sixth round, uh, you basically, basically you're gonna skip everything after the dress rehearsal and then you're gonna tally up your final points. So there's only three things you need to look at at end game scoring. One is objective cards, they're all going to score between 1 and 3 points. So, just look at the back of the manual and it tells you how they score. Okay? Uh, next, for any gold pieces in your tableau, we already talked about that before. So you're going to look at your whole tableau and for any gold pieces, I don't have any, but <laughs> those gold pieces up there, you're going to score a point. And finally, you have to pay all the characters that you have taken. Alright, so for example, Let's say I had taken all these characters one, I would have six, obviously you always draft six more people, but let's just say I have to pay these guys. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take all your money and distribute it however you like between all your characters. Now for every character you cannot pay the full amount on the card. So this one needs uh, one, uh, sorry, three. So you have to put three coins on him. For every character you cannot fully pay, you're gonna lose two points. So if you took a bunch of five guys, you're going to lose a ton of points at the end of the game because it's hard to pay uh, all that cash to those people. All right, you'll adjust the score and whoever has the most is going to win the game. There you go. Those are the rules. <laughs> Click on the link below to see my thoughts and the playthrough. If not, I'll see you on the next game.